1,161,000. This matching up with what's on the trial balance now, the 1,161,000 and the 120,000. And then we have the bad debt, which is going to go from the 9,000 up by 10,000 to 19,000. That, of course, over here on the trial balance as well. Note that we are increasing bad debt expense at this point in time, that being the difference, that then affecting net income, net income going down. We also want to remember that we will be recording something to the subsidiary ledger. This company, this particular company, owes us 30,000. We're going to decrease it down by 30 to zero, meaning they're not going to owe us anything anymore. Even though they only paid us 20, we're not going to leave the 10 there that they still owe us. We gave up on it and therefore are going to write the entire thing out down to zero. Contrasting that with the allowance method, we still got the cash. We still got the receivables going down to zero. But instead of the 10,000 going to bad debt, now it goes to the allowance for doubtful accounts. So we have the same effect on the accounts receivable. 1,191 down by the 30,000 to 1,161. Same effect on the allowance uh, for, I'm sorry, same effect on the subsidiary ledger, uh, the company going down to zero in terms of the subsidiary ledger 30,000 minus the 30,000 to zero. The difference being that there's no impact on the income statement, bad debt not being affected, no effect on net income. What is happening is we have this allowance account which was at 31 prior to this, now going down by that 30,000 to the 21. Remember that this 31 was there prior to this time period. It was there created from the prior time period based on an estimate and we created the bad debt expense based on either the revenue or the accounts receivable and then we closed it out. Of course, that's why there's nothing in bad debt expense because it got closed out at the end of the year or the end of the month and therefore is at zero and we're writing off the uncollectible receivables here that has already hit the income statement in our estimate. We estimated it prior to this, wrote it off in the prior time period, it then rolled into the capital account in the closing process and therefore is not on the income statement for this time period and we're just writing off the bad debt to the allowance account. We will have a bad debt, won't happen however, until we make an estimate at the end of the time period. If we compare and contrast the two then, this is the bad debt, this is the allowance method. This is, this is the direct write-off method, this is the allowance method. We have no allowance for doubtful accounts, it's just there for demonstration. We're not using it under the direct write-off method. We have 19,000 of people that we have determined will not be collectible and therefore wrote them off, decreasing net income by that 19, the 378 minus the 19, bringing net income to net income of 359,000. We have the same receivable over here, 